Okay, so this is chapter one, section 1.1, which is modeling and equation solving. What we're gonna learn about is numeric, algebraic, and graphic models, the zero factor property, and we're gonna do some problem solving and talk about what happens when we have a graph failure. Okay, so the three models we're looking at in this section, a mathematical model is a mathematical structure that approximates, approximates phenomena for the purpose of studying or predicting their behavior. A numeric model is a kind of mathematical model in which numbers or data are analyzed to gain insights into phenomena. And an algebraic model uses formulas to relate variable quantities associated with the phenomena being studied. So the first one that we're gonna go through, this is an example that I put in the notes, um, is we're gonna talk about how to determine, if you have a table, how can you determine if it is a linear model or if it is a quadratic model or if it's exponential? So the example that we have in our notes, we have a table where we have time and distance. And so we have 0, 0, 1, 0.75, 2, 3, oops, 3, 6.75, and we'll go to 4.12. That's enough points to see. Okay. So what I want you to understand is the way that you can tell from a table if it's going to be linear or quadratic or exponential is by taking the differences of the y values. So we know time is our x and distance is our y. So if we take the first difference, that just means we're going to subtract the y's and see what we're going up or down by. Okay, hard to see my decimal places. Okay, so the first difference we get 0.75, we get 2.25, 3.75, and 5.25. Okay, so right there, if all of those numbers had been the same, that means we're increasing by the same number each time, and that would tell us that it was linear. So if all of those first differences were the same number, then this function would be linear, and we would be looking for a line to model it. Then if we take the second differences, we're gonna take the differences between the differences. That's what our second differences are. So we get 1.5, 1.5, 1.5. Okay, so those are all constant. So that means that this is a quadratic model. So if your second differences are constant, then it's quadratic. So exponential is something completely different. So you're not looking at the differences, you're actually looking at the ratios. So if I took 0.75 divided by zero, I can't do that because I can't divide by zero. If I take three divided by 0.75, I would get four. If I took 6.75 divided by three, so you're dividing the y values. So if that was constant, so the ratio between the y values is constant each time, then you would have an exponential function, okay? So we knew that this was quadratic. So if we want to, the example in the notes is how can we fit it to D equals KT squared. So we have D values and we have T values, but we need to figure out what K is. So you could take any point from your table. So we could say, take the point 1, 0.75. So I plug 0.75 in for the distance and 1, that's a K and one in for the t. So one squared is just one, so that tells us that our k value is 0.75. And you can do this with any value. You could say two, three. So you could say three over here, two squared, divide it, and you'll get 0.75 for any value, okay? So our function would be d equals 0.75 t squared. So again, Constant first difference means they're linear. Constant second difference means it's quadratic. And constant ratio means it's exponential. Okay, here's our next example. So we are comparing pizzas. A pizzeria sells a rectangular 18 by 24 inch pizza for the same price as its large round pizza. Um, 
if both pizzas are the same thickness, which option gives the most pizza for the money? So what we'd want to do is if we're not worrying about thickness, we're not worrying about volume, we're just worrying about area. So we know that the area of a rectangle is length times width. So our rectangular pizza would be 18 times 24, which is 432 square inches. And then we know that the area of a circle is pi r squared. So we know that the diameter is 24 inches, which means that the radius would have to be 12 inches. So we put a 12 in there. So this would be 144 pi, or if we multiply that out, we get, oops, not five. We get 452.4 inches squared. So that tells us if they're paying the same price for both pizzas, which one's gonna give us more pizza for our money, and that would be the circular pizza. Okay, here's our next example. We are looking at an algebraic model for this one. So it says solving an equation algebraically. So find all real numbers for x, which x squared equals eight minus four x. So the first thing I would always do with these is try to Factor it, because factoring is always going to be the easiest. So I'm going to get this all onto the same side. So this would be x squared plus 4x minus 8 equals 0. So we're thinking, are there numbers, two numbers that multiply to 8, which would be 1 and 8, 2 and 4, that also add to 4? And I can't think of one that works. So what we would do if we can't factor... Um, we could either graph it on the calculator to find the intercepts with the x-axis, or we can use the quadratic formula. So I'm going to use the quadratic formula. So I'm going to say x equals negative 4 plus or minus square root of 4 squared minus 4 times a is 1 and c is negative 8 over 2 times 1. I'm going to take my calculator. I'm going to simplify underneath the square root. So 4 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 8 gives me 48. So I have x equals negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 48 over 2. Now we have choices here. So if they want an exact answer, then we need to reduce the square root of 48. So that would be 2 and 24, 24 would be 2 and 12, 12 would be 4 and 3, 2 and 2. So the square root of 48 would be 4 square root of 3. So this would be negative 4 plus or minus 4 square root of 3 over 2. And then since they all are divisible by 2, we could simplify this into negative 2 plus or minus 2 square root of 3. So that would be our exact answer. And then if you want to get the decimal values, you just type that into your calculator. So negative 2 plus 2 square root of 3 gives me approximately 1.46. And negative 2 minus 2 square root of 3 gives me negative 5.46. Totally running out of space. Okay, so these are my approximate answers. Um, if I leave it in simplified square root form, then those are my exact answers. Okay, so the last thing is um, titled seeing a graph for failure. So it says to look at the graph of y equals three over two x minus five on a graphing calculator is there an x-intercept? So if you look, here's our graph. Um, we can tell, we hopefully, um, kind of a review from Algebra 2, we know that this is a hyperbola, and we know that that hyperbola is going to approach x but never touch it, and it, you can tell that by looking at the table here. So what we would be looking for for an x-intercept would be that the y value is 0. So you'll notice that the negatives get bigger and bigger and bigger, and then we see an error in there at 2.5. So we know 
that 2.5 is going to cause us to divide by zero. So that's our asymptote right here. And we also can tell that our graph is not going to cross the x-axis. So there is no x-intercept. And what it shows here is that you can plug in zero for y and solve. So we could multiply both sides by 2x minus 5. That just turns into zero. And zero does not equal 3. So that tells us that there is no x-intercept on this graph. Okay, so that is section 1.1. Let me know if you have any questions.